So lately I've been receiving a lot of questions about animation, so I'm going to make this into like a small series where we're going to talk about animations a lot. Um, this is going to be a part of my beginner series, so you will be able to find these videos in my beginner series playlist. And in today's episode, we are more so going to be talking more so about the theory of things. We're not going to really do much, uh, but I'm going to try to explain how things work and uh, how basically animations should be done, made and etc. Well, well, we'll see how far we get. Essentially, let's start with the first thing. So there are two types of models in the game. There are static and there are skeletal models. Now, for example, these bits right here, everything that you see right here is a static mesh, which means that it is static. It is like a stone. It is just that this shape and that's all that there ever will be to it. We can't really modify this uh, because, well, it's just this specific shape. Now, with skeletal meshes, like this character, for example, he can bend, stretch and do all that stuff based on the bones and the weight paint that is attached to him. So, uh, I have this guy right here, just a regular character, and essentially, just like any other model, if we would look at the wireframe, uh, every model is being created from a bunch of points, so there's dots everywhere, a bunch of points that are getting connected with lines, and this is how an, essentially a model is created, and then... Uh, for a skeletal one, we are creating bones inside of this character and then these specific dots, well every single one of these dots, the connection points, are getting attached to a, a specific bone. So for example, if we would have a look, let's have a look at the foot maybe perhaps, so we have a uh, left toe end, so obviously probably this part right here, all these dots that we see in the forward are probably going to be attached to this toe. So whenever we move this bone, all the dots that are attached to that bone will stretch, bend and move and it goes on and on with all of the other bones. Uh, th this middle part of the leg is probably attached to the base, uh, then the heel part is probably attached to the foot and then we have the left leg which is probably everything from the knee down below till the foot and etc. And it goes all the way up. So essentially uh, the weight, that's called weight paintings when you attach uh, vertices to the bone. So these dots to the bone and they are from values 0 to 1, at least in Blender. I'm not sure with any other modeling software, but probably it is 0 to 1. And basically if it's 1, then that means that it's completely glued to that bone so if the bone moves 10 units forward then that point that vertice will move 10 units forward as well if it's like 0 0.5 then it's only going to go like halfway so that will allow the stretching effect just like the skin for us humans can stretch uh, that's exactly the same thing that's going to happen with these vertices now the animations are created by moving these bones so let me go ahead and switch this back real quick so let's say like we spoke about the toes so we have the left uh, left toe base so now if i move this up you will see that they are moving so the forward part the, the front part of the of the shoe is probably at uh, value one so if it goes 10 units it goes 10 units but as you can see here next to the shoelaces a little bit below the shoelaces that part is stretching and that is because it's not a like full one, it's probably something a little less so that it would allow for some good stretch. Now these bones will never be visible, so don't worry about that. You can see this bone is kind of sticking out, at least trying to. This is a very well weight painted model, so it doesn't really move out that. Oh, there we go. We can do it like this. So technically at this point the bone should be pointing out, but the bones are invisible. So you never have to really worry about the bones sticking out. All you have to worry is about that your character doesn't do some weird stuff like this in the animations. Now, uh, once we have that out of the way, let's have a quick look at the base character. So essentially as I said, we need a skeletal mesh so that it can move around and this is our character. Now, one very common misconception about things is that uh, this character right here, he, uh, he doesn't really care about any real collisions or anything like that by default because by default all the collisions are getting handled by this capsule that he is inside of. So for example, if I would move this guy to over here, 
compile and save this, hit play, and it's in this window right here. You can see he's up there, he's running, but he doesn't really care about any collisions. He's outside of the level, and that is because, well, actually the character visual part, the, the mesh itself is just a visual representation, and it doesn't really care. Uh, this is minus 90, I guess. He doesn't really care about anything in the environment. Uh, we can do basically anything at any point that we want because all the collisions and the movement and everything is actually getting handled by this whole actor and the mesh is just a visual representation of what's going on. Now, real quick, uh, one thing that I actually forgot to mention is, for example, uh, I had this character before, so let's have a look at the guy once more. I have the males and I think it's the shirt three guy. There we go. So this guy has some clothing on him. Now you can't just grab any clothing you want. It has to be weight painted to this specific mesh. For example, uh, this is a default character that is using a default skeletal mesh from the mannequin. So this is his skeletal mesh, all his bones and all that stuff. And you will see that if we look at his bones, for example, the bones, there we go. His bones are called ball L. And then there's some other bones, which don't, don't matter. Let's just speak about this one. So he has the ball L, but my guy right here has a left toe end. Now, also, this one doesn't have this middle piece uh, like this one has. Now, these animations that I have, for example, for this character will never work for this character. You could use the target morphing tactics, uh, but I don't really enjoy using those because so sometimes they do cause issues. For the most part, they are really good. Uh, they all work fine, but I try to... Uh, create animations for my specific skeletal uh, because that makes my life kind of a little bit easier than just scattering animations from all over the place and then hoping that they will work with my specific mesh. So essentially the clothing pieces must be weight painted to these bones that I have on this character because if I'm gonna remove the this shirt from this guy and bring it to this guy it's not going to animate properly because then I will need to re-weight paint that shirt to these bones right here. So you need to make sure that always if you are working with clothing, this is a question that I have received a lot, how can I animate my clothing? You need to make sure that your clothing is on the same skeletal as your character because then that way it can use the same animation as your character does. Now also like I mentioned, I can't use this guy's animation on this character. So for example, if we would select the character, here we have the animation section, we can change, there's uh, a couple of modes that we can use. Uh, essentially you will use just one of these two, mostly you will use the use animation blueprint, which will handle the animations for you, or you can use a specific animation asset, which then you can select. As you can see, I only have a couple of animations that I have by default in this project and there isn't any other animations. So we can just simply launch any animation that we want and it's going to just continuously play. So for example, if we set up the running, we hit play. As you can see, the character is constantly running and he never stops because all he knows is just this one specific animation. Now, if we would change up this guy to, let's say I have my male Shirt 3, this guy right here, he has completely different animations and there's a lot more to him. As you can see, he has his animations and again, if we use one specific animation, all he's gonna do is this one single movement and he is never really going to care. All he is going to do is going to be playing that one specific animation. So using the animation asset, just a single one, is never a good idea because all you will have is just one animation, so it's a lot better if you are using a animation blueprint. Now, this animation blueprint is not gonna work for this guy. I haven't really set it up in this project, so let's go back to our mannequin and let's go ahead and let's select the third-person animation blueprint. There we go, and now it is getting the animations handled. Now we're not going to talk about animation blueprint in this specific video. We're going to talk about that in the next one because there's a lot of things that we need to talk about in there. But 
But without creating the animation blueprint, you can also play some animations from your event graph as well, which is actually not ideal, but maybe in some situations it could come in handy. Now, for example, let's go ahead, let's in our character open up the event graph. Let's go ahead and let's say we need a, let's set up a keyboard one key event for this one, just so that it's quick. And from there, we can just simply play animation. So we can play an animation and uh, mine already gave me the mesh, but make sure that you have the, uh, as your target, you have your skeletal mesh, your character's model in the target. And then you can select any animation that you want. Uh, so I have a bunch of animations. You got to make sure that your animation that you are playing is for this specific skeletal. Right here, it is showing all the animations that I have. And I know that those will not work. So I'm just going to select the third person walk, which I know is for this character. So now if we would hit play, it is giving me an error. I don't care. That's okay. That's for a different blueprint, which I'm not using. So we are running. And now if we hit one. As you can see, he is walking. Now he stopped walking in the middle of the animation because he just played it once. We didn't set this to be looping. So now if we hit looping, he's gonna walk continuously. Here we go. But now at this point we are running this, uh, setting it to play the animation and the problem is he will never stop. He will continuously keep walking and never stop and that is because he has changed the animation mode from using the animation blueprint to use animation asset because we told him to play a single animation and we never said anything else after that. Now what we can do here is create like a delay. Now, let's say we wait like two seconds and after we have waited those two seconds let's go ahead and let's uh, set uh, I think it's set so let's just look for animation mode so yeah it's called set animation mode again the target is your character's mesh and then you can select any of the modes and I will, will want to switch back to use animation blueprint so it walks for two seconds and then after two seconds it goes to the animation blueprint so that the animation blueprint would handle the situation so two seconds have passed and he's back in his state there we go there we go everything seems to be just fine so in some situations the play animation could come in handy but it's essentially it's not ideal because we can do all the exactly the same stuff inside of our animation blueprint which looks a little bit like this there we go so here are a bunch of states between which the character is rotating uh, depending on some of the conditions and then it picks an animation for you and you don't even have to say play this animation because you have already said that okay here in the jump start you are playing this animation then if something happens if it matches the conditions then it goes to the next one or to back to the other one there's a bunch of ways how we could manipulate with this and we are going to be talking about all of this stuff in the following video uh, for today's episode that's going to be it but in the next video we are going to create our own animations we are going to learn how to blend animations together how to run walk all that stuff uh, uh, also for the multiplayer as well of course so yeah like always thank you very much for watching hope you found this information useful if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode or any other episodes i upload twice a week so yeah uh, thank you for watching and i see you in the next one